What's up YouTube? Today we're gonna to be doing an awesome video on Jellyfin, which is probably my personal choice for a home media server. Jellyfin is amazing because it was forked from a project called MB and is totally free, free transcode, free housing and distribution of your uh, content. And I really love it because it is completely open source and amazing. So today I'm gonna to show you how to install that in two ways. We're gonna go through the dockage uh, interface like usual. We're also gonna go through the TrueNOS apps catalog. I'm gonna get it up and running and I'm gonna show you some basic ways to get it set up and using it. So to start off by doing this, we're gonna to wanna to come into our data sets and we're gonna create in our configs directory, a data set for Jellyfin and, it's, and two sub data sets. So we're gonna come over here and these are gonna be apps just like that. Now I'm gonna do two sub data sets under Jellyfin. One is gonna be for the config file, and this is gonna save all of our settings just in case we ever lose our container. And we're also going to do one for the cache, which is going to save all the posters and images and metadata from all the stuff that's in Jellyfin. So we're gonna call this one cache, just like that. And we're gonna do apps. Okay, so this is our Jellyfin config folder. So now I'm gonna go and show you guys how to do this through Dockage. Uh, we're gonna go over to Dockage, we're gonna compose a new stack, we're gonna call it Jellyfin, like this. We're gonna come over here and delete that. And I'm gonna come over here to Jellyfin. Now Jellyfin is under the, under the MB tab as well. So MB and Jellyfin are down here. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to Jellyfin, and this is the Docker Compose for Jellyfin. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna copy this just like that, and I'm gonna paste that in here. So you'll see here, I have it called Jellyfin. I have the UID and group ID set correctly for apps. It's on. It's gonna run on port 8096. I have the runtime set for NVIDIA. This is if you wanna pass your NVIDIA card through. If you don't have an NVIDIA card and you're not transcoding, you just go ahead and comment that line out like I just did. Uh, here is going to be the config file for Jellyfin, and it's passing through the media directory. So if I was ready to start this, I would just click deploy. I'm not actually gonna use Dockage today. I'm going to use the TrueNOS apps catalog. So I'm just gonna close this window out, but if you wanna do it, just click deploy from here and you're good to go. So I'm gonna close that out, come through here, go into my apps, and now let's do it through MB. I'm sorry, through TrueNOS. So this is Jellyfin right here. We're gonna install it and we are going to change some things. So the publish server, server URL, this is gonna be the location that is going to be our machine. This is 191, uh, and our port is going to be 8096. So we'll leave that there like that. I'm going to change the web UI port to 8096 because that's what's default, all of these things. Uh, I'm going to leave everything else the same. Not going to touch that. Now, also, mind you, I'm the community edition of Trunas. This is Fangtooth. So when you guys upgrade next month in April, uh, you are going to see this screen. So let's go ahead and change some of these things. We're going to go host path for the config storage, mount, tank, configs, jellyfin, and the config storage here. This is gonna be for our configs. We're gonna do the same thing for our cache storage, mount, tank, configs, jellyfin, and cache, excellent. Now transcode, transcode has some cool things. We have the opportunity to do host path and IX volume, but the better of these choices is either they're temporary, the temp FS. If you've got a bunch of RAM, choose temp FS, it's gonna be the fastest for you. I don't have a bunch of RAM on this test disk, so I'm just gonna go temporary, and that's just gonna be a temporary file created on the hard disk itself, that's totally fine. We're gonna to wanna to add our media in here, so we're gonna do host path. Uh, our mount path is going to be media, and that's what it's gonna look like inside the container. Our host path is mount, tank, and media like that. So that's going to allow Jellyfin to see all of our media files. I'm not going to do anything else here. If you have a GPU, like an NVIDIA GPU, you're going to see another checkbox here to pass through your NVIDIA GPU. I don't have one, so I don't see it. But if you want to have, if you have one and you need it for transcode, go ahead and check that box and then click install. And we'll be right back as soon as this is up and running. Okay, we are up and running, our Jellyfin is going. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and click the web UI right here. And you'll see here this interesting thing, it says select server and has a server already here. This is incorrect, I don't wanna see the screen. Some people do get the screen. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click this server and I'm gonna click delete the server. Now I'm gonna come back out of here and I'm going to restart my Jellyfin container. So now I've done a reboot, I'm gonna go ahead and click the logs here and make sure everything is good to go. And it says it's listening. Everything seems to be okay. Let's come back out to my apps. And now Jellyfin says it's up and running, so I'm gonna click my web UI again. 
and this is what I should see. The reason I show that error is because some people have told me they've gotten that error before when setting up. This is the correct way to fix that error. So this is what I should see the first time. If you, did, if you just jumped into this the first time, didn't have to do the select server thing, that's cool. So that, good for you. That worked out really well. So we want to use English. We're going to click next. Uh, username is going to be admin for me. I'm going to pick an insecure password. You guys are going to pick a secure password. I'm just doing this for test purposes. We're now we're going to add a media library. We're going to click this plus here. The content is going to be movies and we're going to add our folder. So we added everything to our media and here's our media movies. That's our movies folder. I'm just going to leave everything the same right here. You have metadata options here. I recommend you do refresh your metadata every day or every 30 days if you can. It's going to have a bunch of metadata folders here. That's great. Um, in terms of everything down here, this is trick play extraction. I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, I am going to enable image extraction and I am going to extract images during the library scan. Uh, that's a really cool thing to do. So this is going to set up my, my media for my movies pretty well. So I'm going to hit OK here. That should be good to go. Now we're going to add one more for TV. So the content here is going to be shows. I'm going to add my media and I'm going to show you how to do this by hand too. Media slash uh, TV. Well, it didn't work the way I wanted it to. Media and then TV. Okay. All right, library settings. Uh, I'm going to leave that the same. I'm going to leave that the same. Red antenna, leave that the same. Disable, disable, leave all that the same. Mm -hmm. I am going to do every 30 days a refresh just in case. Uh, I'm going to leave all these checked like that. I'm going to leave that all blank. I am going to allow the two chapter images to extract. I'm going to hit OK. There we go. I'm going to hit Next, English United States. I am going to allow remote and I do want to enable automatic port mapping and we're done. So I'm going to hit finish and now I'm going to log in as my user. And there we go. Movies and shows. Now, mind you, this is empty. I don't have any movies or shows, so I'm not going to see anything here. But the reason I want to show you this is if you do have this, it's going to start scanning your library and you're going to see things start to populate here. Let's check out our options. So let's go into our settings. We have our admin profile here. I don't want to mess with that. The display settings here. Uh, everything here is set to auto. I'm going to want to change all my display languages always to English uh, just because it's going to make my life a little bit easier. Do some stuff like that. Daytime locale. It is going to be English just like that. Display mode. Uh, it depends what you want to do. I'm going to let it select auto and I'm always going to keep the dark mode on because that's just me. Um, I'm not going to mess with anything else in here. Everything else is pretty good. I don't want to use backdrops or anything like that. This is next up in the next three. I can, you can change this to the next 30 days and so next up this month, for example. And we're going to click save there. So just a few little quick tweaks. Again, that's just to make my life a little bit easier. Uh, the home, this is going to show you the organization of what you guys can see. So all these sections here are optional. This is going to show you the library order. So for example, continue watching is, I like continue reading. I don't need that because I don't have a continue reading. I'm not going to do any reading. So what's going to give you the option for continue watching again, continue listening. I don't have any audio books. So my media and then continue watching and then live TV. I don't want live TV on here. I'm not going to use live TV. So I'm going to turn that off. Uh, next up recently added. So I'm going to actually move recently added higher. I want recently added way up top. I'm going to make this none and this is fine. Just like that. Everything else is here is good. I want to leave movies and shows in that order. Uh, library folders. And this lets you do automatic grouping. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to save this just like it is. So let's come back to my display to home playback. I'm going to only touch a few things in here. So for example, my home network, I probably want to max that out, but maximum allowed transcoding resolution. Um, I'm going to allow anybody to go, I'm going to leave that in auto, but really it's fine. Um, I don't want to limit anybody else's if they have the ability to get that kind of bandwidth. This is the Google Cast version here. You'll see here the video advanced. Now, some of these settings will break your server, like video advanced, for example. If you enable True HD uh, and it doesn't work, it might break something. You have to come back here and change it again. So the preferred transcode video codec. Uh -huh. and this is the preferred transcode audio. It's so that you can leave this stuff as auto. You may want to tweak with this when you're doing transcode. The hardest thing to do with Jellyfin is transcoding. I'm going to leave this the way it is like right now. I'm going to leave it in auto because it's probably going to be working right out of the box. Subtitles, we can come in here. Mm -hmm. Subtitle appearance is good. This is all good. So I don't want to mess with subtitles. All that's fine. Controls. I'm not going to mess with the game pegs. I don't have like an Xbox controller. And everything else looks pretty good here. This is the administration dashboard. You guys can see everything going on here. So let's come back in here. 
and let's now also the plugins is here. Um, plugins is pretty amazing. There's a lot of plugins you can use for Jellyfin. Uh, we might do another video another time, like the best ones to use, but the ones that are most popular should be near the front. Um, definitely go ahead and search through here to see some really cool stuff. There's a lot of really interesting things you can do here in terms of everything from authentication to transcoding and metadata, notifications, which are really cool because obviously I love notifications and I always wanna have those turned on. So that's, that's a really important thing. This section is gonna be the hardest section that you're probably gonna spend the most time on. This is the playback transcoding section. Transcoding is hard. The reason transcoding is hard is if you have like an NVIDIA card, for example, you're gonna to wanna to select NVIDIA NVEC. If you're using your Intel QuickSync, in other words, you have an on CPU graphics chip, you're gonna to wanna to use the Intel QuickSync QSV. Now the challenge here is these boxes. If I go ahead and start selecting boxes like this, like just random things that I don't know what they do, and then go to click save and try and play something and it actually tries to transcode, it's just gonna break. So the challenge is figuring out, hey, which of these boxes do I need to check? You'll notice that they change depending on whether I have NVEC or whether or not I have Intel QuickSync. Um, and the QuickSync device here, you'd have to actually specify your device like DevDry D128. This page is hard, and because everybody's hardware is different, I can't necessarily say, hey, if you're watching this video, do this and it's gonna work. I don't know what Intel CPU you have, I don't know what NVIDIA card you have, I don't know what your decoding capability or transcoding capability is. The easiest way to figure this stuff out. For example, you'll know if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card or an Intel QuickSync. Say, for example, I'm using an NVIDIA graphics card. What I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna uncheck all these boxes, right? And this is, this is a one way to do it, one way to do it. So one thing I wanna do is I wanna leave uh, that checked right there. Because of course I wanna ena enable hardware encoding. Actually, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check all this, the tone mapping here. And now, so there's guides on the internet um, to, for what to turn all of these things to. But I will tell you that like, again, you can easily break something when you do this. Now the good news is if you break it, you can always come back into the Jellyfin um, interface like this and, and unbreak what you broke. But the best way to do this again, I'm gonna start with H.264 and I'll come all the way down here and I'm gonna hit save. Got it. And that's just the warning saying you could break stuff. Now I'm gonna try and play something. If it plays, great. If it doesn't play, I probably can't do H.264. Then I'm gonna to go to Havoc. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna play some content. If it plays, cool. Then I'm gonna go to MPEG2. And I'm gonna go down this list one by one. Eventually you're gonna hit a box where you try and play something and it doesn't play. That's okay. That just means you know your NVIDIA card can't transcode or hard, hard encode or decode for that type of codec. So that's one like foolproof way to figure out which one of these boxes you need to press and which one you don't. It's literally trial and error. The other way is to go on the internet and to search, hey, I have an NVIDIA, an NVIDIA, I have an NVIDIA card. I want to use transcoding on Jellyfin. What codecs can I use? Which boxes should I check? That's another way to do it. It requires a little bit more work in terms of research, but it might save you some time rather than clicking these boxes one at a time. But this is the hardest screen to use, I recommend that you spend some time getting the server set up right before you turn on hardware acceleration. I'd leave it to none. Uh, for example, if you want to use this, I'd leave this to the very last. This way your server set up exactly where you want it to. You know, it's not some other setting that's breaking stuff. So let's come down here and hit save. So I'm going to save there like that. Everything else is now good. I've got everything else done. I have all my settings the way I want it to be. The last thing you might want to do as well is add users. So if you have remote users, I'm going to want to add, for example, a user with a password, and I want to enable access to all my libraries like that, and hit save, and now I have, I can limit the access. So now that I have a user here, I don't want to ever let the user manage the server or collections or to edit subtitles, but I want to allow them, see, I don't have live TV, so I'm going to uncheck that. I definitely want to allow media playback. I definitely want to allow them to transcode just in case um, that's fine. I can limit their internet streaming bitrate, but I'm not gonna mess with that. I do not want them to delete from anything. I do not want them to create or join groups. Uh, remote control, shared devices, sure, that's fine. Allow media downloads, yeah, so if they wanna download, so if, for example, somebody's watching it on their iPad and they wanna save it locally, I do wanna allow them to do that. Um, I don't wanna hide them from login screens. Uh, and I will do definitely set this to probably three. So basically, 
this checkbox here, hide from user login screens, means when they go to login, they're not going to see their username. And of course, I want them to see their username. So yeah, I do want to see them to be able to see that. And I'm going to give them three tries with their password. If not, it might not be somebody that I want them to allow on here. Maximum number of sessions. Uh, I'm going to allow them to maximize, say, three devices. If they're doing more than three devices, they're probably password sharing. I don't want that to happen. If I do think they're password sharing, I can limit them to just one device at a time. Uh, and that's how that works. So this is a pretty good setup for a user. Let's go over here to access all libraries from all devices, that's good. I can limit them to their parental controls, so I can maximize their parental controls for certain uh, things on movies and TV, for example, because I have movies and shows. Say I want to, this is a child, I say, hey, page e 13. So whoever this user is, it might be a 13-year-old child. I want to let them see everything in my movies and shows, but only with a maximum uh, rating of PG-13. I could also allow or block with tags. I can change the access schedule for time of day. So if I want to limit their device time, do something like that. So there's a lot of really cool options here, gra very granular for who I let come in. And of course, I can change the password. So I want to come over here and now I'm going to hit save. Oh, I lost all that setting. So yeah, save this before you change because now I lost all this, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And that's it. now I have a new user. So you'll see here, for example, I probably want to change this. Hide user from login screens is actually good. That's the right thing. I don't want people to see the admin user. So that's a really good way to go ahead and do that. So now I've got a user set up and I've got transcoding. I'm going to work on that when I ever want to work on that, when everything's going. My devices are here. My live TV, I don't want to mess with. I have plugins. Networking should be good. It's running at 8096. We're good here. Allow remote connections. Everything here, it looks really good. It by default turns off IPv6. You guys might want to switch that on. Everything else looks really good. Scheduled tasks are all running normally. So that's Jellyfin. So here we go. Let's come back up here to my dashboard and let's come back out all the way home. So there we go. So this has just been a quick uh, tour of Jellyfin for the people that use it. This is my number one recommendation for everybody. And the reason for that, even though I personally use MB, MB and Plex are both great platforms, but they require you to pay if you want to use transcoding. Right now, Jellyfin is the only full featured media server out there that will let you transcode for free. Not saying there aren't other, aren't other media servers out there, but MB, Jellyfin, and Plex are pretty much the three heavy hitters in the industry. Jellyfin is my personal pick because it lets you transcode for free. I think that's amazing. Amazing. This is built from the same team that built MB, so you're getting that great product that MB is as well in Jellyfin. I really strongly recommend this product for you guys, for anyone streaming media. I think it's quite amazing. But if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave comments in here, especially if you like what we're doing. And if you really want to thank me personally, please buy me a coffee.